<laughs> All right, okay. let's do this. Here we go. I'd like to call this meeting to order. <laughs> wow. We got dinner. <laughs> Should we dinner? Let's, I'll get you whatever you want if we can get out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> do we um, need a roll call? Yes. Yes. Do a roll call. Okay. Commissioner Sibley. Here. Commissioner Fenster. Here. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Barnard. Here. Council Member Peck. Here. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, everybody should have the meeting minutes in their packet, and I hope everyone's had an opportunity to review it. Um, do I have a motion for the approval of the May 2nd, 2024 minutes? So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? No? Um, thanks. Okay. Um, report from chairperson. Uh, since our chairperson is not here tonight, I did not prepare any remarks. Um, so I move that we go on to communications from HPC staff liaison. Uh, thank you so much, Commissioner Norton. Um, so it's actually been a pretty busy, um, pretty busy couple of months. So um, I'm sure you guys can hear me here. Um, so we've had a number of administrative certificates of appropriateness um, that have been issued, um, roof replacements, like with like. Um, the Aspen Center at um, 501 Fifth Avenue, they are about to begin um, doing some mortar repoint, repointing and brick repair on the front facade of that building and doing you know some some washing basically to do some restoration and repair work on the brick facade there um probably the biggest thing is old saint stephen's church um, and this is one that i did communicate with um chairperson Cher chairperson lane on um saint stephen's church is um they finally are getting they've got their insurance um, stuff dealt with so they are about to replace the roof that is pretty deteriorated on their building um, essentially with the same style of metal of metal roof um, they are also going to be replacing the downspouts and the gutters um, with same style that they currently have um, and then doing window and fascia restoration so um, they do know that if the windows move beyond restoration, if there are any that just can't be restored, um, then they know they have to do come before the commission. That said, they have deep roots as their contractor, so um, I have confidence that their their contractor will will lead them in the correct direction. So they do have a historic preservation specialist doing that so um and then the other thing you'll see is the central presbyterian church across the street they are doing some um they are replacing some of their um rooftop hvac units or, or they're adding a mini split to it so um, it won't be visible from the street but they wanted to make sure they had all the correct uh, documentation um Additionally, um, Chairman Lane and I, we are in the process of doing our very first demolition review um, in um, with the new code requirements. There is a proposal. Um, they've done a pre-application meeting um, at 844 Baker Street. So um, we're currently reviewing the documentation on that. There's a small home on a very large lot that is being proposed for subdivision um, and construction of two new homes um, so we're taking a look at that we do have a cultural resources survey from um, some of the earlier efforts that were done as part of the um, historic east side survey work so we do have some documentation on there um, on, on that particular building so i'll have i'll have a full more full report on that particular one at the next meeting just wanted to make you aware that it is coming up so and then finally um I, mean, I have a couple other items that are come up under, under I'll discuss under prior business, but um, the, on the survey plan, the team from uh, Ayers and Associates who are working on this, uh, Josh Hava and Tim Stroh is their subcontractor. They've done their windshield surveys, have a preliminary priority list that they're working to incorporate into a draft report. 
um, and I should have that the week of August 5th. So probably won't have it for the August commission meeting. Definitely will have it for the September commission meeting. Um, so that is still chugging along. <laughs> and, you know, I have the meeting times and the commission candidate listed under prior business, but I'm going to go ahead and do it as part of my staff report, if that's acceptable. Sure. Meeting time, um, Maria um, did check in on the meeting times. Apparently the safety and justice work is taking a little longer than they anticipated, which is never a surprise to anyone who knows how those things go so we will continue to begin at 6 p.m at least through september because of those scheduling conflicts um if we want to cons if the board wishes to consider making the 6 p.m start time a permanent thing that's something that would need a vote um, and require a bylaw amendment um, for that and then finally we do have a new board member um, the appointment of uh, Don Tarek's appointment was confirmed by city council at their meeting last night. So her first meeting as a commission member will be the August 1st meeting. So um, there was a bit of a delay getting the, the council confirmations due to agenda scheduling and such. So that has been taken care of and is done. So we do have a new commissioner. That's exciting, and I think uh, Commissioner Barnett and I really liked her in the interviews. Mm -hmm. So good. I'm glad she was approved, and she'll be here next month. Yes. So that is what I have. Lovely. Are there any questions for me? I am happy to. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Again. Yes, first Thursday. Yes, we're only meeting on Wednesday this week because Thursday was the Fourth of July, and people were watching fireworks and doing other things, and generally celebrating a holiday. Um, does anybody on this commission feel strongly about the six p.m. start time? Is that something we should discuss and put up for a vote vote at the next meeting, or is everybody comfortable going back to the five p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll just, we'll let you guys schedule as you need to then. Okay. Thank you. Um, can I ask one question? You, she yeah. Can talk to Steve? Yeah. That, see he's, what he thinks. He's working and yeah. Maybe, maybe a different spring. Yeah. We, I think that's a good idea and then we could always put it on the agenda. Um, I, it's nice to hear that you guys are doing a demolition review. Um, I noticed in my neighborhood, and I, I meant to check how far our demolition uh, ordinance extended. There was a demolition on Sunset, 303 Sunset. Yes, so I did, um, our building folks did, they, they are now in the habit of running anything that could be old by me. Um, so our demolition permit only, our demolition review only covers the original town plat. That's what I thought. Yeah, so unfortunately that building, that particular struct property did not fall into um, our purview for demolition review. Okay. But the good news is our building folks are on the ball and when in doubt, they send it to me to take a look at. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments for staff? Okay. Um, so next is public invited to be heard. Are you public? Yeah, I'm public. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, are you um, asking to be heard on a topic that is not on this agenda? No. Okay. Then we will hear from you in a moment. Thank you, sir. Um, so next is our public hearing on the historic landmark designation for the Tower of Compassion. So I will turn it back over to staff. And I will stand up for this one. So uh, my presentation is fairly brief because I know we have uh, discussed this particular property quite extensively on the commission um, and the uh, meeting packet item for this um, for this proposed landmark designation is has quite a bit of detail in it as well. So we are here considering a, a landmark designation for the Tower of Compassion, which is located in Kanemoto Park. Um, this is a city-owned property, and City Council did um, 
recommend that we um, that this commission um, take it up and confer, con, you know, and and he, hear um, a proposal for a landmark designation to make a recommendation back to city council on this. So, um, as I mentioned, this is located in Kanamoto Park in the Southmore neighborhood um, in the southern part of Longmont. It was donated to the Kanamoto family to uh, thank the city of Longmont for its kindness to the family and to the Japanese American community, particularly um, during the dark days of World War II. Um, the property, the, the pagoda was, it is a Japanese pagoda. It's a traditionally styled Japanese pagoda. And the documentation that we've seen is that it is thought to be the first Japanese style pagoda east of California. So it's a pretty special and unique property. It was built in 1973, which means it officially meets that 50 year threshold for a landmark designation. As I mentioned, council agreed to pursue landmark designation, so we are um, bringing it back to the commission for consideration. Um, our historic preservation code includes eight criteria for designation in addition to the 50-year age requirement. If the owner is seeking designation, only one of those criteria is required to be met. In the present case, six of the eight criteria um, for designation are, are met, so it is incredibly significant. Um, one other thing to note is that History Colorado, um, as part of the state sesqu uh, sesquicentennial <laughs> celebration um, coming up in 2026, they are um, they have an initiative called History for All, where they are um, really seeking to add properties associated with underrepresented communities to the state historic um, state historic register. So, um, in speaking with uh, Damien Pachota. Excellent, got it right. Um, in speaking with him, uh, if we if we once if we basically we're next in line, um, once we get this pursuit designated as a his local landmark, we can send it forward for state designation. Um, at this point, it would be probably the fourth site in the state of Colorado associated with the Asian American community. So. Um, it's a extremely unique property, um, and it has uh, you know both for locally for the city of Longmont, but also um, for the state of Colorado. And the cultural survey that was completed for this also indicated that this is probably probably eligible for national register designation as well. So we'll be pursuing the full the full gamut of designations once it's designated once it has local designation or assuming it, it obtains local designation we are a certified local government so that means we would be able to pursue funding through the state historic fund and other um, st other state funding sources to contribute towards the restoration and maintenance work to ensure that it's it's done in a way that is um, historically correct um, you know, for that particular property. So with that, staff recommends that the commission recommend to city council that the Tower of Compassion be designated a local historic landmark. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sure, and I do believe our, our guest wanted to speak, wanted to speak as well regarding this project. Um. Has there been any involvement of the federal government uh, in this project or in the um, facility, the property itself? No, this is strictly a local site and it just met the eligibility requirements. So um, basically the order of operations is we're doing local, we're doing local landmark designation. And once we have that, we will complete um, the work to do uh, state and national Register designation. The, the Department of Interior has not indicated any interest in it? Not at this point. It has not been presented to them. Are, are they aware that it exists? Um, I'm not aware that they do know it, it exists. Um, we have just recently done the historic survey for it in the last, within the last year, less than the last year, and um, and it just became eligible for listing in the last year as well. So um, we really are kind of ahead of the curve on on, on this for this particular property. And, and I have similar questions uh, regarding the uh, Japanese government as it might be represented by <clears throat> the embassy in Washington. 
Uh, are they aware of the project? We haven't gotten to that point yet, but that is definitely an excellent. That's definitely an extra excellent point to to bring it to their attention. Uh, I ask both questions because uh, it may affect uh, how the project is funded, both uh, systematically, annually, and permanently. Uh, if the Japanese government, say through the embassy, expressed an interest, uh, you might, uh, we might uh, obtain uh, some help uh, from uh, Japan, uh, and, or from and or from the Interior Department uh, in its maintenance and operation. But I'm a little disturbed to hear that uh, they're totally unaware of it. Is that possible? That they are totally unaware. I'm not aware. I'm not aware that they're aware. This is a very. This is the very first step from from the city's perspective, um, is to get it designated locally. Um, you know and then move forward with with the state and national um, designations as well so this is this we're very much in the beginning stages of this and view but local designation as a first step but the facility itself is something of an antique and has a significant historical value mm -hmm. um, so 50 years is, is the age. So once something reaches 50 years uh, of age, then it is eligible for designation both at the local and the federal level. Um, and so it is. it turned 50 last year. So we really are kind of in those first steps of, of getting it recognized and, and going through the processes so that we can ensure that there are funding sources and start start seeking additional funding sources beyond the city general fund um, for, for, for for work on it. So but it seems to me that uh, at least the Interior Department uh, has a sustaining and long-term interest in it. And uh, they should be aware of what uh, we locally are doing they, uh, is that not the case yet? They will be aware once we put forth an app an application for national register designation. Yeah. So, and Holly, uh, Commissioner Norton can Commissioner Norton can probably speak a yeah. lot more competently than I can in her role with the state. Um, so, um, there are individuals within the Department of the Interior that are very aware of this, um, just as they're aware of lots of of historic sites. Uh, the the National Register program is run through National Park Service, which is part um, of the DOI. Of that, yes. And they don't, regardless of kind of their awareness, they don't become officially interested until a community brings forth the nomination um, that Ms. Hewitt Opperson is talking about. So um, tonight we will um, hopefully, and it, we already did, we'll forward the local designation on to the city council. And then if city council accepts it, and as the owners of the property, if city council approves it, then we will put together the documentation package to send to the DOI. Um, it goes through History Colorado. That's the conduit to get it to the who we call the keeper of the National Register in DC. So I think that there are probably, and I'm sorry for the feedback in whatever it is I'm doing, um, there are individuals who I think have been uh, waiting for this property to reach 50 years old and will be really happy to see this come across their desk. Yeah, I'm a little disturbed by what appears to be the fact that the Interior Department is unaware of it. Unaware of its existence, perhaps. They, there's no nexus for them to, to have any involvement with it until the city of Longmont requests that involvement. So, so it's... I don't think that's the case. And I definitely suggest that some research be done on that subject because okay. I am aware of other, of other instances, particularly re relating to facilities that owe their origins in or around World War II, right. where the Interior Department has an ongoing uh, interest in them and is a potential source for funding. Yes. Uh, ongoing funding and capital funding. And I think as a matter of courtesy, the uh, Japanese government through the embassy uh, should be informed of 
the existence of the facility and what is being done to it because they are a source of funding. Maybe we can um, uh, send a request. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, hold on. You are seat eight. Yeah, um, first, I just want to compliment you, Jen, on the quality of the packet that we got sent around. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just an excellent piece of work. I, I, one I was expecting, uh, because you've, you've done that leading up to it. We saw a lot of this stuff early on. Um, with respect to the uh, steps, I think we, we want to uh, hoe to our line, you know, to our row in our boat. And our boat right now is getting a recommendation to the owner of the property as to what we think they should do. And then it's really their decision at that point, what they wanted, and not just making a decision of the, uh, with respect to the landmark status, but then how much further do they want to go and who do they want to make aware? So I, I think, well, you know, the mayor is here and here's what we're saying, but the fact is our job is, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Well, I respect Commissioner Fenster's idea, I just think we don't want to get ahead of ourselves by reaching out to all different levels of government when we don't we don't own the property that's up to the city council who they want to reach out to and what role they want the commission to have if any going forward um, that's really up up to, up to them and what they're going to come back to us with so my I guess my question is once we make this recommendation do we have a role at that point or are we We've done all we need to do. So I think that's a good question. Um, there, there are obviously there's 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 a likelihood that things could come back to the commission as we pursue various grant funding and such. If we need commission authorization for anything of that nature, um, you know, obviously there would be updates. Um, you know, if if work if work is done on the on the tower, it would you know, the commission would would know about it, um, absolutely. So um, I think you're correct in that at this point, the step is for the commission to make a recommendation to city council, and then city council will hold their public hearings. Um, I have this tentatively on the council agenda for... <laughs> First reading, which is on the consent agenda, um, on August 13th, and then the actual public hearing and vote would be September 10th. So um, once I have those dates finalized and, and hardened up, I will definitely I will send an, send an email to the members of the commission so that you are aware of the public hearing and um, you know if you wish to speak as part of it you definitely have that opportunity uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm concerned both locally and nationally, uh, given its World War II uh, relationship, uh, that it needs uh, all of the protection and funding uh, that our government, both local government and national government, might be able to provide. And, and, and I, I, I do not agree with the notion that the national government, meaning the Interior Department principally, but not only, because I think the State Department would have an interest also. Uh, I don't believe that we should wait any longer to inform them that uh, it exists and what we're doing with it. Um, perhaps when we make our recommendation to uh, City Council, to we should also um, uh, let them know that there is a sense of urgency to get the National Register 
uh, nomination moved forward if they so desire. Um, and also, is there, uh, it's been a couple of months, um, maybe about six since the last time I saw it. It looked like it was in great condition and mm -hmm. great shape. Mm -hmm. Is there any need for urgency in terms of thinking about funding for capital construction? Are we in a state right now where it is in, in good repair and good maintenance and we're not concerned? I would need to confirm with the Parks Department on okay. that. Park, it was a facilities um, maintenance folks in parks. But yeah. my understanding is it's in good condition. Mm -hmm. um, I know there was some damage sustained um, during the 2013 floods um, that has been repaired. Um, so we would need to work closely with with our our colleagues in the parks department as well so it's a very multifaceted property it's owned by the city of longmont it's managed yeah. by um, parks and recreation so there's a few different there's a few different um moving parts for this particular one um but yeah it's at this point we're at the first step so we're we're, we're getting there yeah and and, and, and from yeah. a policy standpoint it's really up to the city council yes. to determine how far they wish to to pursue um, coordination and you know with both the federal government and potentially with you know other with the embassies. Um, oh, sorry, just a, excuse me, just a second, sir. Someone else, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. I just want to pop in for a second. Um, you're you're absolutely correct that it has to come to us first, and even if we make a motion to direct staff to look at having it uh, informing the Secretary of Interior. Interior, yes, thank yeah. you. Um, that would be a direction to staff, and you're part of staff, so it would come back to you. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it is a process, It'll, and, and I think that we're on the right step. I, I like hearing what Jennifer has done and the steps that would be taken. So we could direct staff at that point when this comes up on, um, I don't know if it'd be first or second, it didn't really matter, it'd be one or the other reading, to uh, go ahead and inform the, the uh, Secretary of the Interior that we have asked for historic, uh, local historic landmark designation. No. And at that point, they can, they can do whatever they do. That, that's out of, I don't have any idea what they do. Uh. I mean, ultimately, the National yeah. Register nomination um, goes yeah. through this through the Department of the Interior, right? Via yeah. History Colorado, yeah, right. So, uh, History the state ultimately has to basically say yes. We think this is national designation worthy. So I can I can ask for that uh, letter to be written it, from the city um, if that's what the commission wants. Okay. Um. Thank you. Okay. Um. My, my recommendation, uh, as someone experienced in such matters, particularly relating to the federal government and to World War II, is that the federal government, through at least the Department of the Interior mm -hmm. and perhaps also the Department of the State, mm -hmm. of State, be informed now of the existence of the facility and the interest, the potential interest in preserving it intact and providing funding, uh, permanent funding, uh, for its preservation and uh, access. Uh, it's in an area where uh, a lot of development goes on and uh, it could easily be compromised, easily be compromised. Okay. Uh, but uh, based on my experience, uh, there is a reason for the Department of the Interior to formally express an interest in its preservation so that any attempt to compromise it uh, can be headed off. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's make that recommendation. Uh, okay. Let's discuss it. Yo, sorry, which, hold on just a second. Sir, there you are. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I would oppose that proposal of Commissioner Fenster's. I think that a, proce a process like this has to be taken. You have to get your ducks in a row. And we're not there yet. 
and to, to reach out in any manner when you don't have your homework done completely and you don't have your votes. We don't know how the council's even going to vote on this. I, I suspect they'll give it a positive vote. But, you know, yeah. the, the po point is we have, there's a lot of things that have to be done before we start reaching out to other potential stakeholders. Um, and, and, you know, the, you know, we, we say that an administrative process, you have to be extremely careful that you don't get ahead of your game because otherwise you're going to get questioned when you do. Well, have you done this? Well, why are you coming to us before you've done that? And then we look foolish. Would you like to make a motion? No, I just would have, I would have, I don't, if, if Commissioner Fenster wants to make a motion, I, I would not not second it and would vote against it. But, you know, I don't think we need any okay. motion at all. We have a motion on the table okay. anyway. That I th was that approved to? We did. We already approved to send okay, it forward so, to council. So then if Commissioner okay. Fenster wants to make a motion, um, if, it, if no. it gets a second, I would vote against it. Okay. Would you like to make a motion, sir? No, I think. Uh, okay. Because I, I think that. No, I think it's enough. We should. Uh, okay. On my part, to suggest that the federal government, uh, okay. through the Department of the Interior and perhaps also the Japanese Embassy, be informed of the existence mm -hmm. of the facility and the fact that steps are being taken uh, for its preservation. Uh, if uh, the city uh, doesn't want to do that, uh, I think that's the city's privilege. Uh, but I think it is a serious mistake, uh, even now, for the federal government and the several departments okay. and agencies that have an interest to not even know of its existence. Okay. Um, and I yes. believe we had a Ma member of the audience yeah. who might uh, want to speak yes, on this as well. But so. let, we'll okay. let Sorry, I just want to make sure. Word. I just want okay. to make sure that was on okay. the radar. I would be. I'm going to be happy to talk to uh, the city manager about this process going forward, and I'll bring back that answer. Thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Public, we would like to invite you to come forward and provide any comments you have on. Um, the Kanimoto uh, Pagoda of Passion. Uh, thank you. Quick question. How much time do I have? Three minutes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be just fine. Um, hi, I'm a member of the public. Um, my name is Matthew Popkin. I live at 850. I can take three hours if you want. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be a problem. Okay. But thank you for checking. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Good evening, Historic Preservation Commission. This is the first time I've come to one of your meetings, in person at least. Um, my name is Matthew Popkin. I live at 852 Missouri Avenue um, in Southmore Park. Um, I live across the street from the Tower of Compassion and Kanemoto Park. I see it every single day. Um, so do my neighbors. We all find it a distinguished and beautiful part of the neighborhood. But that's not what you're voting on today. Um, you're voting on whether it is a cultural and significant, or historically significant landmark. Um, and I'm here to say it absolutely is. And I've learned so much from the packet, from the plaques on site. Um, it's a cultural and physical reminder of compassion, uh, despite extreme xenophobia, which has frankly not disappeared, but taken different forms in recent years and decades. And that visual reminder um, is, is meaningful to our community, to our neighborhood, and to the city. Um, it's meaningful toward Asian Americans and towards many others um, who have experienced xenophobia um, and other forms of discrimination. And the local and state history surrounding the tower's original construction is something that I hope everyone, frankly, in Longmont one day understands. I certainly didn't until learning more about it for this me meeting. Um, while the focus is on the tower, I did want to flag uh, that the Tory gate that is associated with the site is meaningful and significant too. Um, it is referenced in the packet, but um, and you can see it on pages 23 to 25 of attachment two. 
Um, but while I'm not an expert on Japanese culture, my understanding is that the Tori Gate actually marks the boundary between the ordinary space and the sacred special space of these types of sites. Um, and, and the gate is a distinct and culturally significant feature that meaningfully complements the Tower of Compassion. So I, I share this because unless the gate was constructed later from the tower, which I understand from conversations with Jennifer that that might render it ineligible from funding, um, I think it would be prudent to stress more clearly in the application, um, especially at state and potentially at federal levels, um, that th this makes the site even more distinguished. Um, if the gate was not maintained, it would not only be a shame, but it would detract from the cultural and historical significance of the very Tower of Compassion that we're talking about today. Um, so this is not just a prominent feature, but frankly, a defining feature of the park, the tower and the gate combined, uh, and a clear demarcation of historical significance. Presuming this designation would increase opportunities for funding to maintain the tower, Tory gate, and any other associated features, I strongly encourage this commission to support the application for historic landmark designation um, at the local level and hopefully at more, uh, more advanced levels down the road. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments, and thank you so much for um, bringing our attention to the importance and the significance of the Tory Gate. Um, we'll take that into consideration as we move forward with other uh, state register and national register nomination information. Yes, sir. And if I may, I can clarify when this moves okay. forward to city council okay. that this oh. encompasses the entire okay. built. Uh, We'll have portion. to have very specific boundaries for state okay. and national register, so we can just make sure that that's okay. Commissioner Fenster. Is there a... Uh, ...dated perimeter? In other words, uh, is there... Does the current planning, including providing a uh, publicly owned perimeter that would protect uh, the site generally from further development? So in, in typically when we do landmark designations, we apply it to the boundary of the property um, unless there's a reason to, to limit it to the structures. Looking at the Cultural Resource Survey, the um, legal description is for Lot 2, Kanemoto Park, Burlington Elementary School subdivision with a note that the legally defined parcel encompasses but does not exceed the land historically associated with the property. So I will confirm with um, the people in my building who are masters of legal descriptions um, <laughs> that, you know, as far as what what the extent of the legal description would be because I know we need a legal description for the state and national yes. nominations and I just need to confirm that this legal description is adequate. So this property, so the, the tower and the associated um, gates and such are within Kanemoto Park, so it's in a large city-owned parcel. So the likelihood that someone could come in and develop off portions of it is, is highly unlikely and would require, um, a, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's currently very well protected. Yeah, so it does currently have yeah. excellent protections. Yes, um, I'm looking at page 32 of the packet where it talks about the um, elements, the assessment of phys historic physical integrity related to significance. And in there, it refers to both the uh, tower retains its integrity of feeling as if directs related, direct, relates directly to the Kanemoto family and ethnic heritage 
Asian as an area of significance. The property as a whole, including the tower itself, the Torrey Gate, the Cherry Tree Grove, the bronze plaques, and the park setting evoke deep feelings, blah, blah, blah. So it seems to me that this assessment here is quite inclusive and should speak to the issue. Uh, and I would just uh, suggest that uh, whatever needs to be done to make that happen as far as boundaries or description or whatever, but it, it appears clear in the presentation mm -hmm. that that was intended. So I believe I was out of order before when we went ahead with the vote prior to listening to public remarks. Um, is there anything about Mr. Popkin's remarks that would change our recommendation to forward this to council? Do we want to redo that vote? No. Okay. Thank you. And I apologize. Um, I will get better at this someday. I am sure. Um, then we, uh, then the council has decided to uh, please forward this to city council for consideration of local landmark designation. Um, thank you and Carl for this fantastic um, assessment of the site. It is incredibly thorough. I agree with Commissioner Barnard. And thank you, Mr. Popkin, for coming to speak about it. Um, I'm glad that it means so much to the community and that you're willing to spend your time with us here this evening. So, thanks. Thank you. Um, all right, so do we have any new business this evening? All right, do we have any prior business? We already discussed the commissioner candidate who mm -hmm. will be starting next month, which is very exciting. Other, other prior business? Um, any comments from any of the HPC commissioners? Um, any uh, comments from Mayor Peck? Thank you. Um, no, other than this, I really enjoyed this conversation and the, and the time that you took because this is an amazing, amazing structure. And my family and I lived over uh, right off of Missouri, right across from it as well, for four years, and we saw it every day. Um, I want to say that I am going to Chino, Japan next March for their 40th or 50th anniversary. and want to invite, I don't know which Kanemoto is still with us. It's no. either Jimmy or... No. Jimmy's the main one. Jimmy, but yeah. There, we had no. There's several. 25 of them at the Symphony Gala. I know. So. <laughs> it's great. So um, I would like to take um, whatever historic preservation and a copy of that and give it to Jimmy to take to Chino because um, it was the Kanemoto family that got us with uh, Mayor, um, oh, she was her name, Leona Stecker, that introduced us to Chino, Japan as a sister city. So the Kanemotos have been a huge influence in our city. So I think this is, it's all very appropriate and very exciting. I think that's lovely. I, yeah, I think it would be great. Thank you, Mayor Peck. Um, anything else? Oh, let me flip my paper over. All right. If there are no other comments from anybody, do I have a motion to go to dinner? <laughs> do we have a second? I'll second. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. That was unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great meeting, everybody.